So, my main point was about how uh, damaging and how costly foreign policy blunders can be. And we're seeing it with the current situation in Iran. And uh, I realized this when I was reading essays from uh, Winning the Unwinnable War, which is a good book on uh, America's self-crippled response to Islamic totalitarianism. And also from Ankar Gatte's book, Failing to Confront Islamic Totalitarianism. And one of the essays I read mentioned how... Uh, this goes all the way back to Vietnam. Vietnam was so costly that it crippled America's response to Islamic totalitarianism because when the Iranian regime, when the Ayatollah... I guess it was all the the is, uh, Islamic zealot protesters in Iran in 1979, but the Ayatollah sided with them. When they stormed the American embassy in Iran and took American citizens hostage, uh-oh. Uh, one of the reasons why the Carter administration did not want to respond with military force... was because the Vietnam War was fresh in the minds of many Americans. Are you kidding me? Did my stream just go down again? As I was saying, the Vietnam War in 1979, it was uh, fresh on the mind of many Americans, and that was the reason why Carter did not want to respond with military force was because he did not think the American public would support uh, another war because Vietnam was one of those wars where we did not have a specific goal other than containing communism. So even Vietnam, yeah, so Vietnam, you know, thousands of Americans died, probably wasted probably count billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. I don't know the exact amount. And for what? We eventually lost South Vietnam to the to the communists from the from North Vietnam. And it was a war that always seemed like there was uh, never any end in sight. And so the Carter administration... Uh, ...did not want to start another endless war. And so the Iranian regime was never properly dealt with in 1979 because uh, we didn't, you know, America wasn't confident because of Vietnam. And we're seeing it happen today. Uh, you know, the Iranian regime is a hostile enemy to the United States and they need to be uh, removed. They need to be dealt with. And uh, whenever they shoot down a drone or storm an embassy, one of our embassies, which they did before uh, Soleimani was killed. They kidnap U.S. soldiers. Uh, and there's talk about maybe deposing the uh, regime in Iran. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, well, we don't want another endless war because they look at someone like George W. Bush who responded to 9-11 by failing to properly identify the enemy. And resorting to, uh, you know, getting involved in Afghanistan, which we're still in, 20 years later. It took us, what, 11 years to get Bin Laden? Most powerful military force in human history and all of our intelligence. And it took us 11 years to find a, 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 a religious zealot in a fucking cave. Are you kidding me? And then also tried to build democracy, thought that, you know, building a democracy, toppling a secular national socialist dictator, which is what the Ba'ath Party is, trying to topple Saddam Hussein and installing a democracy, oh, that will motivate, that will inspire all these uh, Islamic countries and Arabic countries in the Middle East. Then they'll see how wonderful democracy is. Of course, in Iraq, they just voted in... Uh, 
more uh, religious nuts. And that was another war. Thousands of American lives lost. Thousands of American lives altered, ruined. And for what? And now Islamic totalitarianism is uh, arguably worse. than what it was before 9-11. Now there's more militant Islamic groups like Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab, which I think were both uh, established shortly after 9-11. Um, ISIS popped up. Iran is more influential in the Middle East than what it was before. So what did we get? And our endless wars in the Middle East didn't do jack shit to confront Islamic totalitarianism. So, part of me doesn't blame people who freak out about endless wars because our political leaders have shown that they are absolutely incompetent and pathetic when defending America. And uh, it's the blunders of pieces of shit like George W. Bush... that allow uh, scumbag intellectuals, anti-American intellectuals like Noam Chomsky and all of his followers like Kyle Kalinske and all of the goofs over at, uh, at TYT, that allows them to cash in. Because who wants another endless war? Who wants to get involved in Iran? Who wants to overthrow the regime in Iran when uh, our political leaders uh, you know, it'll probably just turn into another blunder where we're in the Middle East in another country for another 20 to 50 years. God knows how long. God knows how long, how much it's going to cost. That's another talking point. They say, oh, we have all this money for endless wars. Not enough money for Medicare for all. Endangering the lives of American troops. You know, it's just like the, what happened with the financial crisis. You know, George W. Bush and the Republicans, they present themselves as, oh, we're free market people. We're, uh, we're all about deregulation and trickle-down economics and lowering taxes. Of course, Bush, uh, it, it was Bush's intervention in, uh, in housing and in banking that helped create the financial bubble and other government agencies that help uh, create the uh, housing bu bubble that led to the financial crisis. And then the financial crisis happens, and what happens? People like Barack Obama and Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders say, look, the Republicans, they cut taxes. They're the party of deregulation. They, 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 uh, they repealed a small part of Glass-Steagall back in 1999, which... Uh, it, it didn't lead to the financial crisis, but that they, they cash in on this narrative. Look at what capitalism does. Whenever you lower taxes, whenever you deregulate, you get the financial crisis. That's why we need more socialism and more government intervention in the economy. And what do the Republicans say? George Bush says, oh, we got to abandon capitalism to save the free market. So yeah, we can him and haw all day about how awful the left is and how anti-American they are. And boy, especially uh, some of these uh, left-wing YouTubers, they're really letting the the masks slip off in the wake of uh, what did Kyle Kalinsky like like when the 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 Ukrainian plane in Iran crashed? He he wanted to blame America, and then Iran took credit for it or took responsibility, saying, "Oh, oh we accidentally shot it down." Probably shot it down because they're still mad about Operation Ajax. <laughs> but it's really, you know, we gotta... We, I, I think George W. Bush and the Republicans, when they're pathetic, and uh, their response to Islamic totalitarianism is to evade the root cause of 9-11... Uh, 
And then you get us involved in these costly, endless wars that result in the deaths of American soldiers. You know, what, uh, where do you think people are going to turn to when this uh, idiocy doesn't solve the problem?